In the next five minutes, we'll cover the basics of pagination and how it applies to web APIs. So what is pagination? Simply put, it's a method for handling large data sets in responses. And there's three reasons that the developers of client applications will care about this. First, because they're trying to conserve resources, things like bandwidth or data usage or memory. Second, it's because they're trying to improve the response time for API requests or third, it's because they're simply trying to improve the human and end user experience that they're providing. Pagination is very prevalent on the browser-based internet, and there are examples all over the place. But let's use an example of our own to really illustrate how pagination works. Imagine we're building a website that shows all of the available books in a library. A simple version of that site might list all of the books in a big list. The downside of this approach is that the user needs to wait for the response to complete. And when it does, he has a large amount of data to parse. It's much more common for sites to provide this type of data in chunks or pages. Pages are much more manageable, both from a technology and from a human interaction perspective. In addition to the data itself, the user will receive a set of links to other pages within the data set that help him navigate around. We can apply all of these same concepts to the web API world. So if you're comfortable with pagination in the browser, it won't be difficult to apply these concepts to your API design. We start by deciding how we will partition the response data that your API generates. The simplest approach you can take is for the API to have a predetermined page size and partitioning scheme. This is the API equivalent of having a website in which the server determines the number of items per page. In terms of API design, this means that client applications simply send in a page number with their API requests and receive the appropriate page of data back. But what's the right size of data to select per page? Figuring that out for a diverse set of client applications can be tough because the answer will be dependent on many factors, including the platform that the app is deployed on, the user experience that the application is trying to project, and even the type of network that the app is using to make its calls. In order to provide additional flexibility to API consumers, it's a good idea to let them specify the length of the page rather than having the server dictate it. In browser terms, it's like having a drop-down box that lets users select how many items should appear on the page. And for an API, it means providing a page length parameter in addition to just the page being selected. It's a nice and simple way to implement pagination for your API, but does have the limitation that the pages will be chopped up in much the same way. If you want to give your consuming applications additional control over partitioning, you can use an offset scheme. An offset scheme allows the application to indicate the starting item and the number of items it wants to receive in the result. Offset schemes also have the added benefit of being a bit more resistant to changing data sets provided that the app knows the starting point of the next page it wants to retrieve. In addition to just the size of the pages, you can provide additional customization features. For example, some APIs support a sorting property, and that lets apps determine how data will be sorted before it's chopped up into pages. You can go further with this customization idea by providing things like uh, different scales or schemes for splitting up the data. For example, you might provide paginated data that's partitioned by date range. All of this customization is good. But what happens if a user requests a page and doesn't provide any pagination instructions? What we don't want to do is send back the entire data set in that case. The best approach is to use default values in the absence of any page instructions. Effectively, what we're doing is mixing two styles. When an application doesn't provide any pagination instructions, we let the server dictate page size. We also provide pagination request properties so that applications can customize the pagination method to meet their own requirements. Just like human users, applications using your API will need a way to navigate through these pages. And to make navigation easier, you need to provide metadata with each paged response. This includes things like the number of pages or items available, the last time the data set was updated, or maybe an e-tag indicating if the data has been changed, 
as well as the current location within the dataset. In addition to that basic data, providing hyperlinks to other pages within the dataset will make it much easier for consumer applications to navigate through your API. In particular, it means they won't have to construct their own URLs or calculate their own offsets. When making these links, don't forget to take advantage of existing naming standards. Use words like prev and next for your rel attributes, as these will be very familiar to developers and will make the interface feel simpler. So let's wrap this episode up. Pagination is a useful way of splitting up large data sets. Just like the web, nowadays developers expect APIs to provide paginations for collections of data. When designing your pagination API, remember to define how the data will be partitioned, support default values, and provide navigational elements in responses. Do those things and you'll keep developers happy with a well-designed paginated API.